Want 10% off your MTG singles? Go to Flipside Gaming and enter the promo code POWER in all caps to receive 10% off $10 or more. Want to see extra videos? Sign up to our Patreon and get access to our Discord, early access to videos, Patreon-only videos, and much more. Need a better life tracker? Download the Gauntlet app for your phone. It keeps track of your life totals, counters, win rate, and so much more. It's free, so go check it out. More info is in the description. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Welcome to our Patreon special. Every time we hit a goal, we do a special video where the patrons vote on the theme of their choice. This time, the polls rolled in and the winner was Plane Chase CEDH. So we grabbed some planes, shuffled up, and proceeded to play. If you want to help decide some of our videos, consider joining us on Patreon. You'll have access to our Discord, special discounts and coupons, extra videos, and much more. Check out our link in the description below and subscribe today. Thank you to all of our Patreons who made this video possible. You're the best. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan playing Brea, Ethereum Shaper. This deck aims to control the board, gain advantage, and win through a number of compact win conditions. Ryan's opening hand contains a Soul Ring, Forbidden Orchard, Talisman of Progress, Demonic Consultation, Vampiric Tutor, Mox Opal, and Avernon Catacombs. Next, we have Garrett piloting the Gila, the Blade Blossom. This deck is a mid-range tempo deck looking to win through combat and carries a lot of interaction pieces. Garrett's opening hand contains a Snow-Covered Swamp, Assassin's Trophy, Limb Duel's Vault, Elves of Deep Shadow, Silence, Marsh Flats, and a Command Tower. After that, we have Mike piloting Corvold, the Fey Curse King. This is a food chain deck where the commander serves as a card draw engine and an outlet to win the game as well. Mike's opening hand contains a Bloodstained Mire, Verdant Catacombs, Dockside Extortionist, Burgeoning, Elvish Reclaimer, Nature's Claim, and a Sylvan Library. Finally, we have Folger, bringing the four color pairing of Thrasios Triton Hero and Vile Smasher the Fears. This deck aims to disrupt, grind the game, and out advantage opponents while going for the win. Folger's opening hand contains an Assassin's Trophy, Necropotence, Oko Thief of Crowns, Force of Will, Birds of Paradise, Exotic Orchard, and a Breeding Pool. Without further ado, let's kick off this catastrophic cacophony of crazy cardboard combos. Mike rolls double box cars on the planar die and gets to start us off. The first plane the group hits is... Cliffside Market. When you planes walk to Cliffside Market or at the beginning of your upkeep, you may exchange life totals with target player. Whenever you roll Chaos, exchange control of two target permanents that share a card type. Mike plays a Bloodstained Mire for turn. He cracks it for a Bayou. He decides to roll the planar die and hits Chaos. Unfortunately, since it's turn one, there are no permanents to exchange. He casts Burgeoning and gives a turn to Garrett. Garrett plays a Command Tower for turn. Mike's Burgeoning triggers and Mike puts a Verdant Catacombs into play. Garrett rolls a planar die and hits. Planes walking into Manamo. Whenever a player casts a spell, that player may draw a card. Whenever you roll Chaos, each player may return a blue card from their graveyard to their hand. Everyone loves this plane, and Garrett casts an Elves of Deep Shadow, drawing off the plane. All through, he passes the turn. Folger plays a Breeding Pool into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Birds of Paradise, drawing off of the plane. He rolls a Planar Die and misses. With nothing else, he ends his turn. Ryan plays a Verdant Catacombs for turn. He cracks it for an Underground Sea. He casts a Soul Ring, drawing off the plane. He casts a Talisman of Dominance, drawing off the plane again. In response, Mike cracks his Verdant Catacombs for a Taiga. He casts Nature's Claim, targeting Ryan's Soul Ring. Nature's Claim resolves, Ryan's Soul Ring is destroyed, he gains for life, and then his Talisman is resolved. Ryan taps his Talisman for Black to cast Vampiric Tutor, drawing from the plane. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He casts a Mox Opal, drawing yet again. He rolls a Planar Die, misses, and decides to pass the turn. Mike starts off his turn by casting Elvish Reclaimer, drawing from the plane. He plays a Prismatic Vista for turn. He cracks it for a forest. He casts Sylvan Library, drawing again. He rolls the planar die and hits. Planes walking to Quicksilver Sea. When you planes walk to Quicksilver Sea or at the beginning of your upkeep, scry four. Whenever you roll Chaos, reveal the top card of your library. You may play it without paying its mana cost. 
Mike proceeds to scry four, putting one on top and the rest on the bottom. All through, he passes. During Garrett's upkeep, he scries four through the plane. He really likes what he sees and rearranges all four back to the top. During his main phase, he taps Elves of Deep Shadow to cast Soul Ring. He plays a stomping ground into play untapped, paying two life. Mike's burgeoning triggers, and Mike puts an overgrown tomb into play untapped as well, also paying two life. Garrett then casts his commander, Nigella the Blade Blossom. Garrett rolls the planar die, misses, and gives the turn to Folger. During Folger's upkeep, he scries floor through the plane. He plays a nurturing peatland for turn. He taps his peatland to cast Soul Ring. He follows up with an Oko, Thief of Crowns. He activates Oko, elking Garrett's Najila. He rolls the planar die and misses. He pays one to roll the planar die and hits. Planeswalking to the Eon Fog. Players skip their untap steps. Whenever you roll Chaos, untap all permanents you control. Ryan is, of course, very sad about this particular plane because everyone else got to scry four and he now gets to skip his untap set. Feeling great about that particular roll, Folger passes the turn. Ryan, with great sadness, skips his untap step. He plays a Forbidden Orchard for turn. He rolls the planar die and misses. He taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Garrett a 1 1 spirit. He casts Mystic Remora. All through, he passes. Mike skips his untap step through the plane. During his draw step, he draws an extra two through Sylvan Library. He keeps them both, paying eight life. He casts a Mana Crypt. He plays a Wooded Foothills. He rolls the planar die and misses. He cracks his Wooded Foothills for a Badlands and then passes the turn. Garrett skips his untap step through the plane. He rolls a planar die and hits. Planeswalking to Marasa. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, its controller may search their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle their library. Whenever you roll Chaos, target land becomes a 4-4 creature that's still a land. Garrett plays a snow-covered swamp for turn. Mike's burgeoning triggers, and he puts up marsh flats onto the battlefield. He attacks Ryan for 4, which the group feels should have been Oko instead, and Ryan takes the 4 damage. All finished up, Garrett ships the turn to Folger. Folger plays an exotic orchard for turn. He activates Oko, creating a food token. He taps his peatland to cast his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. The plane of Marasa triggers, and Folger searches up an island onto the battlefield tapped. He then casts his other commander, Vile Smash of the Fierce. The plane triggers again, and Folger searches up another island onto the battlefield tapped. He rolls the planar die and misses. He pays one and rolls the planar die again, missing a second time. All out of mana, he passes the turn. During Ryan's upkeep, he pays for his Mystic Remora. He plays an Exotic Orchard for turn. He taps his Forbidden Orchard for mana, giving Garrett another 1-1 spirit. He casts Talisman of Progress. He then casts Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand and shuffles his library. He casts Ponder, which he tries to convince everyone that this was the card he tutored for. No one buys it, and Ryan looks at the top three. He rearranges and draws a card. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Sunken Ruins. He then casts Imperial Seal. This being the third tutor he's used, everyone knows that Ryan is starting to look like a real threat. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He rolls the planar die and rolls Chaos. He elects to turn his underground sea into a 4-4 creature. All through tutoring, he passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike activates Elvish Reclaimer, sacking his bayou and fetching up a Field of the Dead. Still in the end step, Mike casts Vampiric Tutor, fetching up a card onto the top of his library and losing two life. During Mike's upkeep, his Mana Crypt trigger goes onto the stack. Garrett responds by casting Silence. Now, completely shut off, he wins his Mana Crypt roll and moves to draw. He draws an additional two cards through Sylvan Library and keeps them both, paying eight life. He plays a Tranquil Thicket for turn. Field of the Dead triggers, and Mike creates a 2-2 zombie. Mike rolls the planar die, and hits. Planes walking to... Skybreen. Players play with the top card of their libraries revealed. Spells that share a card type with the top card of the library cannot be cast. Whenever you roll Chaos, target player loses life equal to the number of cards in their hand. Everyone reveals the top card of their library, revealing a land, an instant, a sorcery, and an enchantment, shutting off those spells. Mike pays to roll the planar die, missing. He pays to roll again and hits Chaos. He targets Ryan, making him lose 5 life. All finished up, Mike passes. Garrett draws his card for turn and reveals another land off the top. 
He plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He casts Edric, Spy Master of Trest. He attacks Oko with his Elk and Ryan for three. Both declare no blocks and take the damage, and Garrett draws three cards through Edric. Garrett rolls the Planar Die and misses. He pays to roll the Planar Die again and hits. Planeswalking two, Kessig. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt by non-werewolf creatures. Whenever you roll Chaos, each creature you control gets plus two plus two, gains trample, and becomes a werewolf in addition to its other types until end of turn. This plane is very good for Garrett because he just dropped Edric and now no one can get an Edric trigger off of the attacks. He cracks his marsh flats for a godless shrine into play untapped, paying two life. Finished up, Garrett passes. Folger starts off by casting Curiosity, triggering Vial Smasher. He rolls, and Ryan takes one from the trigger. Curiosity resolves, and he attaches it to Vile Smasher. He then taps his Peatland to cast Necropotence. He activates Oko, creating another food. He activates Necropotence, paying 10 life and exiling 10 cards. He moves to his instep and puts the 10 cards into his hand, and then discards down to hand size, exiling the discarded cards. During his upkeep, Ryan lets his Mystic Remora die. In his main phase, he taps his Forbidden Orchard, giving Folger a 1-1 spirit. He uses that mana to cast Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. The table begins to discuss how they are going to stop Ryan, and they start to formulate a plan. They decide to let Jace resolve. Ryan taps his Talisman for Black and casts Demonic Consultation. Everyone passes priority and Folger responds by casting Flusterstorm, targeting Consultation. Bio Smasher triggers, Folger rolls, and hits Ryan again for one. Ryan is not feeling the luck from the dice tonight. And Ryan responds by casting Narset's Reversal, targeting his own Demonic Consultation. Folger responds by casting Swan Song, targeting Demonic Consultation again. Ryan responds by casting Pact of Negation, targeting Swan Song. Folger pleads for help from the table, but to no avail. Priority passes to Folger again, and... He responds by casting Force of Will, exiling a blue card, and paying one life. Ryan responds by casting a Force of Will of his own, exiling a blue card, and paying one life as well. Folger tells the table he is officially spent and the table needs to intervene if they want to stop this. Garrett decides that he needs to fall on a sword for the group, and he casts a demonic consultation of his own. Garrett's consultation resolves and he names Force of Will. He begins to flip and hits Force in the top six. Unfortunately, he has to exile his whole library. With no other actions, the stack resolves and Ryan chooses a random card not in his library to exile the whole thing. He activates Jace, milling Folger, drawing a card, and winning the game. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to say, that was a very fun game to play. Admittedly, at first, we were skeptical going into playing a Plain Chase CEDH game, but we really had a blast playing it. We highly recommend it to anyone who has never played it before. Congrats to Ryan on his win. He was able to pull out a victory even with all of his setbacks through the planes and bad luck with targets. Mike suffered from bad draws and couldn't really get where he needed to go before the game was over. Garrett's silence on his upkeep effectively made him skip a turn. Garrett suffered a major setback when his Najila was elk through Oko. He was still able to put in some work, but it wasn't enough before Ryan pulled out the win. Folger was building value super quick with his deck. He had Oko creating food to feed his Necro, Curiosity on Bile Smasher for draws and damage, and was beginning to take over the game. He had to fire so many answers at Ryan, and it wasn't enough before Ryan got the win. The player of the game was Folger. His value engines were turning online very quickly, and was poised and ready to answer Ryan's win attempt. The most valuable card goes to Demonic Consultation. It was used to try and win, and it was used to try and stop the win. All four decks ran that card in tonight's game. If you have a chance to play Plain Chase CDH, I highly recommend it. The playing cards aren't expensive, and you can pick them up through our TCG player link in the description below. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Thank you again to our patrons for recommending this awesome way to play the game. 
Tune in next time when we will duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.